name is Luke Atkinson. I'm from Life Point Church in Bluffville, and my sermon is titled, A Walk in the Woods. So my dad and I have a long-standing tradition of going up to Missouri to hunt in the woods with a, gr a group of friends. So these woods are private land. Uh, we often spend all day out there, and we walk for a long time. And since it's private land, there's not really any trails. We're kind of off the beaten path, pushing through brush, stepping in holes, and it can be challenging. But my dad tends to lead the way since he's more familiar with the terrain and he knows what's going on. He tends to be more wary than me. So this past year, my dad wanted to challenge me and ask me to lead my friend to a point we had been to previously to see if we could see inside of deer and hunt there together. Um, and you know, I thought the plan was pretty simplistic. I thought it made sense, so I was confident and I agreed. And it wasn't until I started walking and my dad started fading away behind my shoulder that I realized that I might make so all of a sudden I was getting smacked in the face by briars, branches, I was stepping in holes, and then eventually I led us astray. We were off the path we were supposed to be on. Um, and we messed up the plan. We met up with my dad way before we were supposed to, and I got super embarrassed. <laughs> I couldn't navigate the trail correctly because I thought I was just as familiar as uh, with the woods as my dad. But in actuality I wasn't. See. This is just like how life is. God is more familiar with the path of your life than you are. And oftentimes, he'll send somebody that knows the path that you're going down, or someone who's going down a similar path, to help guide you. So I've got two main points today. Point number one, don't be afraid to lead somebody else. Moses is a great example of someone who's afraid to lead. Um, but whenever Moses was called to lead the Israelites out of slavery in Exodus 3.11, he had been exiled for killing a Hebrew slave. Um, so he was raised by Egyptians, for those of you who don't know. So imagine being cast out by your only family for standing up for something you believe in. That can't feel good. So in Exodus 3.11, we get a glimpse of Moses' insecurities. All right, so it says, But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And here Moses is essentially telling God, who created him, by the way, he wasn't qualified to do the very thing he was created to do. It sounds ridiculous, but we all do the same thing. So Philippians 2.3 says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain deceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. You may be struggling with something in your life. Most of us are, unfortunately, in this modern age. That doesn't disqualify you for being a leader for someone else. My second and final point is don't be too prideful to follow someone else who knows your path. Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goes before a destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. So when I agreed to my dad's plan, I had pride. I thought I knew the woods just as well as he did, but it turned out I didn't. And thankfully, my pride led to my embarrassment rather than my destruction, and I learned from my mistake. There's several more extreme examples of this in the Bible in the Old Testament, notably King Saul. And in 1 Samuel 15, 22, we catch Saul after he had been commanded to destroy the entire kingdom of the Amalekites. And while he obeyed destroying the entire kingdom, he took some of the livestock back to Israel. And this was not what God had commanded him to do. So in uh, verse 23, Samuel catches up with him and relays a message from God. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance like the evil of idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Just like that, Saul lost his entire kingdom just because he was prideful. That sucks. So don't let your pride get in the way of God moving in your life through somebody else. Obviously, you shouldn't follow just anyone. That's how cults get started. But if someone is trying to guide you, you should pray about it and really ask God if this is from him. And if it is, I encourage you to listen to it and follow him. All right, so to conclude today, we must be ready to either lead or follow because God can and will use us to, to do both. God won't force you to do anything he asks. So, because, you know, he values free will. So I'd encourage you, if you're having a hard time discerning whether or not God is speaking to you, spend some time praying, read the Bible, and really get to know God and to recognize his voice. Thank you, guys. God bless you.